Everybody always reminisces about the time where there was no roll lock. And if you recently joined Overwatch in the past few years, then you would have missed out on this insane experience where you could have five DPS and one support, which I'm sure we're all accustomed to, or the infamous Goat's Comp, three tanks and three supports. But what is even crazier than that is that back in the day, there used to be no hero limit, meaning that you could play six Divas or six Winstons. And if you fought overtime, stalling was bad in 2CP, well then you have no idea what it was like to face six Divas flying out of spawn. And don't even get me started on the old overtime duration rules. Up until the 19th of July, overtime used to not deplete the longer the fight had been going on. This feature was very unhealthy for the game. Even in the highest level of Overwatch tournaments, when it came to overtime, both teams would switch to Lucio, Tracer, the Touch, and recontest the point over and over, making the viewing experience really confusing and boring to watch. But it is nowhere near as boring as the original support roster. You might not have known, but Overwatch launched with only four supports. Yeah, four. Mercy, Lucio, Zenyatta, and Symmetra. I know a lot of you got caught off by that one. Back then, Symmetra was on the support category, but she couldn't even heal. So our only choice was Mercy, Zen, and Lucio. See, the issue of picking Zenyatta was that he only had 150 HP. His ult used to heal only 200 healing per second instead of 300 healing per second. And on top of that, his movement speed while in Transcendence was half of what it is today. But what made it even worse for him. Until June 14th, Widowmaker's fully charged rifle shot did 150 damage in the body so you could just one shot a whole support hero with a really easy to hit hitbox no movement abilities with a widow body shot it's safe to say that it was a rough time for zenyatta and the support role in general for the first couple of months and this led to mercy and lucio being incredibly popular picks luckily july 19th patch off zenyatta and brought our absolute favorite support anna into the game anna checking in on the 15th of November 2016, Blizzard released a patch that increased the ultimate charge cost of all heroes by 25%. Now, this was an absolutely massive change because I remember a lot of talk was happening about numbers that changed and everybody felt the effect of it. And obviously, we are all used to it by now. But trust me, that was a big, big change back in the day. But this was especially a big change for the hero, Mercy. Because Mercy's ultimate back in the day, and it's going to bring a lot of nostalgia, was a massive area of effect resurrection. And as long as they were in range, it would res them. The thing is, on that beautiful 19th of July patch, Mercy's ultimate charge cost increased by a further 30%. This meant that she had a 55% faster ultimate compared to today. Just take a look at how fast it used to charge up. Speaking of looking at how these previous heroes have changed, we need to take a look at Symmetra. Well, because when Symmetra was in the support hero. category, she couldn't heal, but she could shield her teammates, create a teleporter, and use turrets to slow enemies. On top of that, her left click didn't even require aim and would just auto lock onto the nearest target. But let's go back to her shield for a second, because she had to apply that little shield to a teammate one by one, but it was permanent, meaning that a Genji would have 225 HP, or a Tracer would have 175 HP, which is absolutely bonkers. And we need to talk about the Swedish engineer with his turrets and his armor packs to allow his teammates to become incredibly powerful. Torbjorn used to have a very different kit on his release. He used to collect scrap, which he got by people dying, that he could use to give out armor packs that he could place around, meaning that if a teammate walked over it, he would get 75 armor. Meaning that you would have a 225 HP Tracer. Add a Symmetra thing on that, you got 250 HP Tracer. As well as this turret, which nowadays you can just throw out and it'll build up itself. Which was great because it meant that he could throw his turret out of location and not have to worry about being able to hit the hammer. But back in the day when he put it down, he had to hammer it himself. Leveling up from 1 to 2. And then when he hit his ultimate, which was also different, it would enhance himself as well as the turret turning into a level 3, shooting rockets, going crazy. It was a lot of fun. I think that heroes dying and dropping something was unique to Torb, but another character that used to have this was Reaper. You, you might not know, but Reaper didn't always have his lifesteal on his weapons. What used to happen was that when he killed somebody, he would drop an orb, and if he would walk over it, he would gain HP. Now, compared to what we have now, this seems like an absolute hellish nightmare to live in. I love Reaper's lifesteal. Please don't take it away. Just like you did to our favorite hero, Genji. Is that a pro Genji? 
Genji is iconic to Overwatch. He used to have a crazy kit. An 8 second ultimate where he could get so many extra slashes in. But on top of that, he had a crazy cool bug which was called the ledge dash. If Genji dashed at a specific angle and used the wall climb animation, he would shoot across the skies, come straight back from spawn. It was epic. It was fun. It was cool. Everybody loved it. Not just Genji players. But... They removed it from the game, and this is one of the things that people miss the absolute most. They massacred my boy. Back in the day before we got Storm Arrow, Hanzo used to have an ability for an extremely long time called Scatter. He would shoot it at the ground, and if a tank was underneath, well then, <laughs> you get clips like this. Got him. Nice shot, you see, because the way that it used to work is that you would throw this ability at a wall and arrows would scatter everywhere around the room and do a bunch of damage. But if you managed to explode it right underneath them, boom, they would disappear. And this meant that it was so infuriating to people just getting randomly killed when they're low HP around corners because there's a million arrows flying around. But I love it. I miss it. So do so many other players. Really, truly, this was a beautiful Overwatch ability. Overwatch has changed so much throughout the years, for better or worse. What are your favorite and least favorite changes? Are there any times that you miss the most? Feel free to let us know. Much love, everybody. Have a beautiful day.